Hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about IELTS speaking part one,、uh, particularly when you have these questions that seem like just yes or no, or simple questions that will require just maybe a very short answer. Don't let these questions trick you, right?、Um, a lot of my students、uh, start off the speaking test. Maybe quite slowly, a bit shyly, and it's a missed opportunity.、Um, don't wait for、uh, speaking part two to show off your English skills. Start right away in part one. Now, part one questions will have the most familiar topics to answer, though the questions themselves still might surprise you. So it's always good. To practice answering questions about a variety of topics for IELTS speaking part one, two, and three, but I promise you, even in part one, we definitely don't want short answers. We don't want just a yes or no and then silence, or like a two or three word answer. Because remember, what is the examiner going to score you on if you just say yes? And then look around. You know what can they score you on? You haven't given them enough speaking, right? To score you on.、Um, so yeah, a lot of students are nervous and they wait until part two to keep talking. But we want to show off our English skills immediately. So let your English skills shine right away in part one. So I'm going to share with you some answers, some examples that I've heard from beginner students. And give you some tips on how you might lengthen these answers. So, for those of you in particular that are just starting out, a good goal would be to try to answer in a maybe about three sentences. All right, it's a good goal to have. So, we're going to have a look at some yes or no questions,、um, and then questions like "Do you live? Do you have something like that?" Which typically students feel like just a short answer is enough, but we want to make it longer. All right. So imagine you get a question like, "Do you live in a house or apartment?" And my student says, "House." And then there's silence. Silence. Like, okay, <laughs> whatever you say, I live in a house or I live in an apartment. Let's talk about it. Give a few sentences to talk about your house or apartment. So for me, I live in an apartment. I might say I live in an apartment in District Three. I have two bedrooms, one bathroom, a small kitchen、um, living room combo, and for me, it's super convenient because it's just a ten-minute drive to work. Okay, it's not going on for ages, but it's showing the examiner right away that you have fluency skills and you're ready to show them off. So we're not going to just say apartment or house. Let's talk about the apartment or house. Just a few sentences is enough to get you going.、Um, some people might say, "Do you like your hometown?" And for many people, that's a yes or no answer. <laughs> But that's not enough. Do you like your hometown? No. We'll say why. All right. If you say, "Oh, I'm not really a fan of my hometown. It's a bit quiet. There's not much to do. I found it quite boring. That's why I moved to the city that I'm living in now. I still like to go back to visit my family, but it's not exciting enough for me to live full time." Cool.、Um, one of my favorites is, "Do you have any brothers or sisters?" Again, a lot of students starting out will just say yes. Like we need, we need more than that. If you have brothers or sisters, talk about them. All right,、so、you might say, "Yes, I have an older brother and a younger sister. My older brother is studying medicine at university in Japan, and my little sister is eight years old, and she's obsessed with black pink." Okay,、um, I've had students that don't have any brothers or sisters, so they really don't know what to say. So, do you have any brothers or sisters? No, or No, I don't. You think, what else can I say? You can say more. This is true for me. I don't have any brothers or sisters, so I might say, no, I don't. I'm an only child. I always wished I had siblings when I was growing up, but luckily I had a lot of cousins. They were like the little brothers and sisters I never had. All、right, only child is the special phrase to show that you don't have any siblings, for instance. Okay, so that's a good one to pick up if it's true for you. All right, you might get a question like, "Where do you live?" 
All right, again, you can talk about the city or town. Uh, you can talk about the area that you live in, um, a house, apartment, right? You can expand a little bit, a few sentences, give some more information. We don't want just to say Ho Chi Minh City or Vietnam or District One or in the countryside, right? We need to give a little bit more detail. And because it's something where you live, you should be able to talk about this, right? The topic will be familiar to you and absolutely you should be practicing, um, that's why a variety of these topics so that you're ready to go. We don't want to memorize any of our answers because remember examiners are trained to know when students have memorized their answer. And there's no need, especially for part one, though we shouldn't memorize anything for the speaking test because if the examiners suspect that you have memorized an answer, they're going to change it on you. Okay, so no need to memorize, but practicing so that you're used to um, answering things about many different topics is the best way to go. All right, guys, I hope that is helpful. So remember, if you get yes or no questions or questions that seem like they are only going to um, you know, require a short answer, don't be fooled, right? Whatever, give more information, even if it's not true for you, you can add that extra detail, give your examiner enough um, speaking to give you a good score and let your fluency shine right away. Don't wait for part two. All right, thanks everyone. Keep practicing and we'll see you soon.